Dubba and this is Music Tech Fest. Music Tech Fest is the festival of music ideas and it's a giant creative laboratory. We're in a place called Funkhaus, east of Berlin. Actually part of this used to be an old factory for furniture I believe but it got taken over um, by the uh, powers that be in the GDR and turned it into the big broadcasting and propaganda facility. So what we do is we bring together artists and scientists, academia and industry, and we put them in a space together. We put the smartest minds in the room and let them create things, get their hands dirty. It's for people who are interested in music, it's for people who are interested in technology, it's for people who make things, it's for people who think about things. It's also a space where people who don't necessarily fit directly into a particular niche can find their tribe, can find their homes. It's got the largest recording hall in the world. It's a beautiful, beautiful space, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal period building. Victoria Modesta has been uh, part of the festival, and she's been kind of this iconic centerpiece to the festival. Hello, good evening. I'm delighted to be here uh, on behalf of the MIT Media Lab. Last year we had the amazing fortune actually of inviting Victoria Modesta to be one of our fellows. She's a futurist, bionic pop artist who has a personal mission to, through her work, bridge the worlds of music, performance, art, technology, science, innovation, fashion, and the fields continue as she continues her work. I don't agree with the fact that pop culture should be some sort of dirty word. I think that people underestimate how powerful it can really be. The ability to touch many people at the same time, I think it's so powerful. When you work within the kind of more mainstream kind of um, sphere. You're also touching upon technologies of wearables and fashion and uh, tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, sorry, you, everyone will have a chance to see some of the collaborations with two of our students who happen to be here. I work with prosthetics because I've decided that, you know, I, I want to work as an artist, I want to work as a performer, and in my toolkit of things that I can work with is prosthetics. And it just have, so happens to be a very interesting field. You know, uh, a person walking in a room with glasses, nobody says, oh my god, look, there's a person with spectacles there. You know, where still it's like a person with a, a prosthetic arm or a leg, it's like, oh my god, you know, there's, it's, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just about people's kind of understanding. There's, there's some really kind of interesting spaces here, but also a patch bay that leads directly into every single microphone in the building. So we're in the absorption chamber at the Funkhaus building and there is a rather large collective of independent artists that are kind of working with different mediums, light, sound, visuals, sensors, basically everything that can make the environment around you uh, become alive. I'm French, I live in Barcelona. I'm from Amsterdam. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm from Alaska, the United States of America. I'm from Poland and I live in London. I'm from Venezuela. I'm not in the office now. Uh, let's try next week. Now we need to go can't talk. Are you ready for me? So hello, my name is Peter Kern and I'm a musician and journalist and various other things and I'm the co-coordinator of the Performance Lab here at the Music Tech Fest. Artists of lots of different disciplines are building performance experiments and interactive installation experiments in a very short period of time and trying them out for the public on Saturday afternoon. The theme is the body and space so we have projects that go from the very very intimate uh, to prosthetics and even implants 
sensors around the body, biometric data, all the way to projecting out into the space that you see behind me, the absorption chambers. If there's one thing that binds everybody together, it's this, it's this room. Everyone has been dropped here. As far as I know, no performances have ever taken place in this sort of abandoned architecture before. I expect we'll have lots of spontaneous solutions, lots of improvisation, uh, quite a bit of compromise, uh, but these are all experienced technologists and artists, and so I, I do expect some of those last-minute discoveries will, will yield to really quite robust artwork. So my name is Jasmine Isdrakje. I am facilitating the performance lab together with Peter Kern, and we work uh, around the theme of transhumanism and working on projects where we extend our bodies through technology. Uh, so I'm a cyborg myself. I have two uh, NFC implants, one here and uh, one here. So this is my cyborg heart. In the tattoo here I have a chip where I will be planting audio and I'm also creating visuals for it. So there will be like a video played and I'm, um, the next test will be a game. So I'm planning to turn myself into an arcade cabinet basically. So Victoria will be singing one of her new songs and um, working together with a lot of artists here where technology is used in different ways. There will be sensors on the nails for example and on the skin and most of all we have the um, EG sensor. So there will be three sensors on uh, the performance's uh, head hidden in the hair and those will trigger uh, the color of her costume. So my name is Francisco and I work in a team called Mew Arts that is a neurotechnology team where um, we try to bring neurosciences and the neuroscientific knowledge into the arts. Neurofeedback is a clinic, it, it has begun as a clinical technique to teach people how they could control their emotions. For instance, if you're a very anxious person, if you have in real-time feedback of your mental state, you can control that mental state. If you have a device like this that can show you that you are getting anxious because the lights of your trousers are, are shining, uh, you can control it in advance rather than just notice that you're anxious when you pass out. Mm -hmm. This is the brain computer interface where we test all the algorithms, but then to work with Victoria, we, we need to hive this so we will use just these electrodes and these wires. She has to train a little bit bef before, but after training, she consciously can control the color and the projections and the light of her dress with her mind. So every time she's more excited, she will like light up the dress. If she's more meditative, more calm down, eyes closed, the dress will be slightly blue. It's going. Each time I've been discovering a new form of sort of technological expression, to me, it feels like a very emotional experience. However, a lot of presentations that I have seen of technology tend to be not very emotional at all. Okay, it's just to figure if everything is really okay. Is it something that you use to extend your existing human qualities or is it something completely alien and cold? It's so weird this mind reading stuff because I always get quite freaked out when certain people have a very strong ability to um, to kind of put a poker face or completely disguise their emotions and it really freaks me out and kind of unnerves me. And this is kind of interesting because it's completely even further than that. It sort of exposes your emotions so that you can't just hide it on your face. You have to also hide it in your head. You can't actually, which is quite interesting too. It's like an extra vulnerability and nakedness. If you could express something directly from your mind into the environment, what would you want to do? I really hope that we'll capture something that feels fresh and different. Something that I as a punter and as a, someone who enjoys entertainment haven't been able to experience. I'm from Newtown, Australia. I'm from Rotterdam. I'm from Berlin. I'm from Paris and I live in Barcelona. I'm from Australia and I currently um, am living in Austria. Okay, well we're all working on an idea around Victoria and Modesta's performance. There's going to be a combination of videos and uh, generative 
visuals, is that right? Mm -hmm. Generative visuals is a pre-programmed behavior that you just define, for example, particles and it it trigger how the particle will behave. It's a generative particle 3D rabbit and we want to create a floor where Victoria could stand and where she walks we can follow her position and create this energy. We see the video where she's kind of she's scratching the floor and she comes in. Yeah. Yeah. That would be brilliant for that projection. Would be mm. brilliant for that. <laughs> when we do the three month big budget <laughs> Over the years, you know, as I go into like for example uh, an avant-garde experimental kind of art performance and then I go and see, I don't know, Madonna at the O2, you know, I sit there and I just think, why are these world, worlds so exclusive within themselves and why is there such snobbery between them, you know, if I can go to MIT, uh, speak to professors of biomechatronics and then next day go to a fashion show and hang out with a bunch of fashionistas, you know, I experience them as people who are expressing their ideas through different ways and through different languages. So in the middle of the structure there is a, there's a sensor, mm. so the closer you get to it, it will have uh, more flicker and more intensity and you get more struggles. And for me the, the metaphor works with a, with a moth, how they, uh, how they do this suicide, the candles, so it's kind of like this attraction to something that is not necessarily like a good thing. Oh, no, I, I have no plan at the moment. <laughs> head to head, you better run, you better run. There's that, there's that section and that's where there's a lot of ticks happening. I wonder if that could be somehow cute. I am Horacio from Portugal, Porto. Um, I'm from Berlin originally. I'm from Amsterdam. So I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia. I'm from China and from Peru. So we are working with different ways to have your body as an interactive platform. Uh, for example, I did uh, these fingernails that could open the door of a hacker space or your office or another fingernail that could pay the metro. So how you can control your body and make your body also interactive with different technologies. And we have this, it's a necklace that she will be wearing and each time she wants to control a different animation she can just play it. We have these five fingernails and each fingernail is a different animation. The necklace have the microcontroller and the RFID reader that could identify each of the fingernails. So when she wants to turn on an animation, she just put her fingernail into this necklace. So it could go from one animation to other. So we change the colors, we change the lighting patterns, we change the brightness of, of the skin. We're designing several lighting patterns for Victoria's show. For example, like this one is more like electricity because her show is about herself being this cyborg, so this electricity was going through her body. And then we put it on our arm in different ways. So for example, like this, shooting her electricity out of her body. Okay, yeah. So if you just do like something like that, it will be like easier for... Yes, this is uh -huh. that's it. I think there's a lot of people in the world who are concentrating on solving practical problems like being able to move your ankle or uh, I don't know doing performing some sort of tasks more efficiently you know and I think that you know for me as an artist I want to work on how can we expand our imagination of what a human form is in a very exciting, playful kind of experience. How could it work then with the audio? You said you can't be played, so you can't have them with quieter, less bright in the environment. If you've got a mind, it just to go straight on show. And then I'm triggering it to place, create it then, just to sort of build it. And let's just make it nice and long. Let's play with it. And you want it longer than it was? Yeah. The track gets bigger, etc. If you want silence. And cut the light off. That's what today is, it's relentless. <laughs> I mean, we could do a lot less, and we could just stand there and just make little presentations. But Let me know whatever you need, yeah. want to change, lights need to change, cues need to change, so we can improve on the uh, free 30. We just need like a 
stage. And it's quite difficult to create an opportunity where you can merge all of those things together. Light, sound, visuals, senses, basically everything that can make the environment around you um, become alive and how can they all interact together. When I think about technology, I do very much see it as extending humanity and uh, not being defined by it and definitely most certainly not being ruled by it. But it's, it's very strange how just replacing a rather small body part with an artificial one has prompted such a big dilemma and such a big kind of like quest for what it all means. It's quite weird really. I'm trying to connect this controller to the LED that's going to be on the costume. Time's up already. During the rehearsal, we think it's better to put the jewelry actually in her hair because it looks really cool. And then having two strips of lights on her legs instead of in one arm. kind of uh, transformations are going to happen in the next few years. It's fantastic to just be able to work through so many stages, right? You guys see how it was in the beginning stages, like, but I think it's, it's about like, being able to use your imagination to know how good it can be. I think it's all about staying playful and just being in touch with your kind of more inner in a world and everything else is kind of external, changeable and fluid. Really. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank